So let's talk about them in a little bit more detail. So generative topology optimization, GTO. So as I said, this is um, this is running inside Creo. So you know it's fully integrated inside Creo. You're not launching a separate program. Uh, it's just another tab that appears inside the Creo UI. We'll see this. So you know for all of you who are Creo users there, you'll be instantly familiar with the UI and all the workflow and everything that's there. Okay, so it just runs in the ribbon or the same sort of thing as you do with all your normal Creo stuff. Okay, we've got a generative tree that shows us information. We can see all that in uh, in there native Creo UI, okay? One of the great things about that, you're having to learn a separate tool, okay? So we go in and we very quick to set it up, okay? So we define our um, our geometry. So we've got our starting geometry, you can see here and shown in blue, uh, sorry, in gray, in the light gray color. Uh, we've got our preserved geometry, the stuff that needs to remain fixed, that might be our interfaces, uh, any excluded geometry we want, or put in some clearance uh, areas, whatever we might need, okay? We can go and define all of our physics, our loads and constraints and contact and the like, okay? Uh, and then we can go and often define our design criteria, as you can see here. So we'll have a bit, we'll look at those in a bit more detail. Uh, where we define our goals and constraints and everything else, okay? So nice and simple to do. And then we go off and run the optimization, okay? So this is using uh, PTC's own kernel. So uh, some of you might have heard us talk, uh, we spoke about this a while ago now, first back at uh, uh, back at Converge actually, um, when PTC had recently acquired uh, Frostum uh, Solver. So uh, basically that acquisition was made back, I think it was 2018. So that is what has evolved into uh, the Creo GTO. So that is the engine that is driving this. Okay, so it uh, basically solves for the optimization goals and comes up with the best shape based on your manufacturing constraints. Okay, so once we've uh, once we've run that and uh, and come up with our final result, okay, we've got uh, a number of different things we can do. So we can uh, run results verification and interrogate that. So we can look at our uh, stresses and displacement and actually safety factor now in Creo 9. Uh, so we can review those results, uh, view animations, see see what's going on, make sure we're happy with that. Okay. Uh, if everything's great, then uh, this is another one of Creo's party tricks: is we can then uh, basically uh, generate that design. So this is another one of the great tools about being integrated to Creo. So we can have it build uh, either in the current part or create a brand new part from scratch, and it will take that faster geometry that comes from the uh, generative engine and build a BREP geometry surface from that, okay? So it uses the uh, the free style feature that was first introduced way back in Creo 1, so that uh, subdivisional surface modeling. So you can choose to build a tessellated model if you want, okay? But for the most part, most people would want a, a BREP solid model that they can then continue on to work with, and Creo can automatically generate that for you. So it's a little note there, say, and all, not, it won't work in every single possible use case. There might be some complexity where you might, it might uh, partially create that surface. You might need to do a little bit more surface construction to fill it in. Uh, but the examples that we've worked with and some of the tests we've done with some customers, uh, it's automatically done it, okay? So uh, basically a couple of clicks and you've got a completely finished uh, solid model from that, okay? Uh, the other thing is that it builds this as a feature. Okay, so the generative design comes into the Moultrie as a feature. Okay, uh, so it's editable, so it's it's captured there. You could have actually, if you really wanted to, have it set up so that it automatically runs every time you make changes to the features above it. Obviously, depending on the speed, you might not want to let it do that, but it's in in that way, it's very similar to a behavioral modeling feature for those of you who played around with that. Okay, so it's captured there and always available within that model. Okay, so that's a little bit of a overview of GTO. So I think the best thing is we have a quick look at what that looks like. 